following my recent discovery that not all 32-bit float recorders actually use dual analog to digital converters to create 32-bit files, I wanted ex to explore what the real-world result would be of using a 24-bit recorder and a 32-bit float single ADC version of the same recorder and a low-cost dual ADC recorder. For my first test, I wanted to pretend that I was recording a loud rock band in a club, but at the end of the song, in silence, a housefly cruised around the drum kit. In other words, I imagined that I was recording something very loud and very quiet in one take. I wanted to simulate the widest dynamic range that I reasonably could. The only way to simulate this on a 24-bit recorder is to set its gain to the minimum for the loud bit. I recorded a short piece of rock music into the 24-bit recorder, the Zoom H2N. I played the music turned up loud in my studio and held the recorder right up against the speaker. I set the recorder's gain to zero. I made sure that the recording almost lit up the clip warning lights on the recorder. Next I repeated the same thing using the same playback volume and recorder position using the Zoom H2 Essential. This is a 32-bit float recorder that only uses one ADC. How it produces other than a 24-bit audio stream into the 32-bit file without the recording ending up just the same as the 24-bit audio is not known at the present. Lastly, I did the same thing with the Zoom M2 mic track recorder. This does use dual converters. Here is the waveform of the audio from the H2N 24-bit recorder. And here is the waveform from the H2 Essential 32-bit float single ADC recorder. And here is the waveform from the Zoom M2 mic track recorder via its dual converters. Well, you can see that the waveform from the 32-bit float recorders looks like a brick wall. The recordings peaked at about 15 decibels, plus 15 decibels, slightly less on the M2 device, which has a bigger maximum SPL figure. It can record slightly louder stuff. 0 dB is, is of course the maximum for undistorted audio. So next I normalised all three recorders. Here is the normalised waveform of the audio from the H2N 24-bit recorder. Here is the normalised waveform from the H2 Essential 32-bit float single ADC recorder. And here is the normalised waveform from the Zoom M2 mic track recorder via its dual converters. So, both of the 32-bit float devices managed to produce undistorted audio after normalising process. So far that's all as expected and it confirms that the H2 Essential with its single converter acts like it had two, at least in this test. Or is it smoke and mirrors? If the output from the preamp was undistorted, just, and the single ADC simply output the data with 15 dB of digital gain, I suspect the result would look just like this. Hmm. Now let's turn to the fly buzzing round the drum kit in the silence. At this point, the H2N input gain would not have changed. Gain riding is cheating and by definition it will reduce the dynamic range. What I did was to take the three recorders into a fairly quiet bedroom, but in a suburban late evening environment, and record with all three at the same time. I clapped my hands to provide a reference signal. Then I said a few quiet words and recorded the silence. Sadly, I didn't have a test fly to hand. Once again, I normalised the three resulting files. And here is the result, complete with audio playback. Please ensure that the YouTube stable volume feature is turned off when you listen to the sound, as it will mess up the comparison. 
Here is the normalised waveform of the audio from the 24-bit recorder, the H2N. This is recorded on all three recorders at the same time. The Zoom H2N has its gain set to zero. The other two recorders have no gain adjustment. Here is a normalised waveform from the H2 Essential 32-bit float single ADC recorder. This is recorded on all three recorders at the same time. The Zoom H2N has its gain set to zero. The other two recorders have no gain adjustment. And here is a normalised waveform from the Zoom M2 mic track recorder via its dual converters. This is recorded on all three recorders at the same time. The Zoom H2N has its gain set to zero. The other two recorders have no gain adjustment. If you listen to this at something like a normal volume, not turning up your playback device, I don't think you will hear much noise either from the recording devices nor from the room in which they were used, except from the H2N, the 24-bit device, where you can see and hear a strange pulsing in the recording. In another test I made sure that no other device was close to the H2N to make sure no RF interference was involved but it made no difference. This device does not like recording very low levels with gain set to zero. You could say, of course it doesn't, but I'm trying to show how 32-bit float devices may have an advantage in this situation of recording in one take something very loud and something very quiet. Here is a scan of the frequency analysis of the recordings with the H2 essential being the green lines the H2N being the red lines and the M2 being the blue lines. Note the scale on the right of this analysis. Note also how the H2N audio rolls off quite noticeably in the highest frequencies. I wouldn't claim that this tells the whole story but it certainly makes the M2 look like the lowest nose device of the three and that's the one with the dual converters. Lastly, I did one further test, this time to evaluate what would happen if we didn't want to record the rock band playing, but we only wanted to record the fly buzzing around their drum kit. To capture that super tiny sound with a 24-bit recorder, we'd turn up its gain to the maximum. So that's what I did on the H2N. The other two are not equipped with gain controls, so we'd have to use them as is. Here is the normalised waveform of the audio from the H2N 24-bit recorder. This is recorded with all three recorders at the same time. The Zoom H2N has its gain set to 10. The other two recorders have no gain adjustment. Here is a normalised waveform from the H2 Essential 32-bit float single ADC recorder. This is recorded with all three recorders at the same time. The Zoom H2N has its gain set to 10. The other two recorders have no gain adjustment. And here is the normalised waveform from the Zoom M2 mic track recorder via its dual converters. This is recorded with all three recorders at the same time. The Zoom H2N has its gain set to 10. The other two recorders have no gain adjustment.
what I notice here is that the pulsing sound in the recording on the H2N is now gone. The H2E seems to have the most noise in the silence and the M2 the least, with the H2N being in the middle. Here is a scan of the frequency analysis of the recordings, with the H2 essential being the green lines, the H2N being the red lines and the M2 being the blue lines. Note the scale on the right of this analysis. Note also how, again, the H2N audio rolls off quite noticeably in the higher frequencies. So this shows that despite the M2 using the same fixed preamp gain as in the loud recording, because you can't change it, the noise seems to be no worse than that from the H2N, which had its preamp setting change from 0 to 10. So what's my conclusion from all this? Firstly, the M2 with its dual ADCs writing to 32-bit float would be the recorder of choice of the three if you wanted something equally capable of recording a rock band and a buzzing fly without having to do anything other than turn it on and press record. It has a very wide dynamic range. The H2 Essential can handle the loud stuff within its specification but would not be the best to choose for the fly. The H2N does pretty well in both scenarios but you'd have to get the gain right and it's not good at recording very loud stuff and then very quiet stuff in the same clip with no gain change. Does the H2 Essential suffer from its single converter? It's hard to tell. I would guess that its preamp before the ADC is not very quiet and the number of ADCs following a noisy preamp does not change the result. But it has other things to recommend it if recording very quiet stuff is not your chief objective. At the end of the day each is a different tool for a different job. So first think about the job then select the tool. Thanks for watching.